Hey y'all, this is Cindy and I'm the Tireless Tangler. Welcome to my channel and welcome to day 14 of the 100 Days of Zen Tangle 100 Day Project. And uh, for those of you who are with me, uh, I really appreciate it. And today's pattern is going to be Feather Fall by CZT Carol Ohl. This is going to be one of these like braid that I have really liked for a long time and I have pages and pages in one of my older sketchbooks where I tried to get the hang of this and never really did it so once again I'm having to step outside my comfort zone with something and really play with it until um, I feel confident that at least I can uh, give you guys the idea on it um, and especially address some of the things that are hard for me because I figure if they're hard for me then probably there's at least one other person out there that uh, struggles with the same thing. Okay, so let's start on Feather Fall. This, um, I'm going to use a sepia pen, a 01 in sepia today, uh, mostly because I'm down to my last 01 in black and I haven't ordered any more, and so I'm hoping to save that for things that have to be black. So, to draw feather fall, you start with whatever line you feel like should go with your um, feather, however you want that to look. And then the first step is to add these little branches coming out. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Okay, these little branches coming out, and to each one of them around the base, you want to add some thickness, some line weight. Okay, and now we're going to continue. Now, from my experimentation, I find that you don't want to put these too far apart, these little branches. Um, you miss out on some overlap opportunities if you do that. Um, plus then you have more area to fill in uh, with random things. So uh, you'll see what I mean when we get there. Here. All right, I'm going to put another one up here by the top. And remember these branches, you want to curve them in, in something comfortable for your hand so that you can reproduce it. Okay, now on the other side, the same thing. Um, I don't like to line mine up exactly, but they're going to, some of them will end up being um, pretty close to the other side. Okay, so once you've completed your branches on each side with a little bit of extra thickness around the um, trunk or the base, the middle line, uh, then you want to start by araing uh, these branches. Now, let me say, if your if your branches are a mess, if your ara lines end up being a mess. I want you to persevere, go through, and do it all the way through, even though you feel like you have messed up in a way that is beyond saving. Um, what I am finding with my own experiences with this is that um, even if you have yucky lines um, that you're not happy with, that the end product is one that um, minimalizes um, problems. and emphasizes the overall tangle, which is a lovely quality to have uh, for a tangle. So um, you want to um, keep aura-ing. I'm just going to work the one side now. I mean, ideally you would want your lines equal distance uh, apart, but that's just not going to happen for me. Okay, once you've gotten a few auras on there, go ahead and take a line and draw it from the middle of your branch, from where that branch ends, all the way up to the tip of what you're auraing. That wasn't pretty, but you get it. Like that. Okay, now fill out with more auras. And 
and continue to join them. Whoops. That was a little more interesting than I was hoping for. Okay. You can see that my lines are a pretty big mess. They're wobbly and shaky and not looking really good. But let me show you um, how to finish out the side and how to sort of uh, <laughs> distract from some of those problems. So first, I'm going to look for the little gaps between uh, the aras, the ara branch, the arid branches. And I'm going to take a line from the base and go out there, put a cute little ball on there. And continue to add just little hatch lines here and there where you feel like maybe there's too much uh, space someplace where uh, the aura didn't fill it in well. And it really doesn't matter. You can fill in the whole thing and make it a lot thicker down at the base. Hopefully, <laughs> of course, you'll do a much better job than I. But if you give it a little thickness, um, some hatch marks down along the, the main branch, this also adds depth Oops. This also adds depth to that line. And then when we fill it in on the other side, we're going to have something that looks really cool that nobody's going to be worried about uh, the lines on. Okay. Let me see how quickly I can get through this next part. Keep in mind, feathers are not perfect either. They're just beautiful. Well, they're perfect in their way, aren't they? Mm. Okay. Okay, now for the middle, uh, it really didn't show on her step out, but um, I've been sort of um, at the end making myself a little, um, another branch and sort of getting something up here that can shape this. But really, you just need lines that follow the same path, if you will. Now, this is in no way perfect. Of course, y'all can see that. But perfect is not the point. So, for shading, you can, of course, you're gonna shade along this middle line Get it nice and, nice and dark, put down plenty of graphite there so it will spread out real nice. Real nice. <laughs> well, and let's see what we end up with. And you'll notice that for something that was a bit of a mess, this is not that bad. Now, if you're working in color, my suggestion is to do your shading down the middle um, with uh, whatever shade you're wanting to and work your way out light on the ends. So, there we go, feather fall. Let's put it in the pattern. Let's put it right here. 
and I'm going to sort of uh, do a diagonal and leave a little room And remember the length of your branches is is n it, your arrows are going to be taller than that so leave yourself some room there the auras and I'm going to really uh, take my time and see if I can do this <laughs> sort of neatly. actually a lot easier smaller All right. That's not bad. So we'll put in our little feather little individual hairs. So I'm really having problems with my iPad and um, I'm sorry that this cut out on you. You didn't miss much. Uh, just finishing up the little um, edges and um, just put your um, graphite down. Simba says good hello and everyone should be awake and up and going right now because he is. shade another level or another um, layer. Uh, uh, well, it's not the best one I did, but it's okay. It looks pretty cool in there, actually. All right. So the only other thing, of course, is to shade where it goes and comes. And again, I will do a, a shading pass once I'm finished with this uh, adding patterns and then I'll go through and, and really uh, put in some major shading at that point. But this gives you an idea of what we're doing. And that is our pattern for today, Feather Fall. Today is 14 and tomorrow will be day 15. For all of you who are still here with me, thank you. I will see you tomorrow. Bye.